Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're gonna paint a fairy tree. If you haven't yet already, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Make sure to check out the video description below for a full list of materials, and let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do today is paint in our background, and we're gonna use phthalo blue, burnt umber, and titanium white. We're gonna give this a nice, cool background that seems kind of misty and distant. So I'm gonna use my number 12 cloud brush. Now, as always, if you don't have my brushes, you can either get them, there's a link in the video description below, or you can use any brush that you're comfortable scrubbing with. And I am using this brush dry. I like to scrub to get a foggy background better with a dry brush than a wet brush because the wet brush kind of makes the paint travel a little bit farther. And the dry brush gets down into the texture of the canvas and helps kind of fuzz the colors together rather than just blending them together. So I'm gonna come into my blue and I'm just gonna grab a little bit, not a whole lot, and a little bit of brown. I do wanna keep this on the bluer side of this mixture. So you can pull it out to test what the color is. And then some white, quite a bit of white because I want this first area to be very light. Let's add just a tiny hint more brown into that. The brown just helps make the phthalo blue a little less intense. I'm gonna start right in here because I know that my tree is gonna be over here and I want it to seem brighter back in this area. It'll help it seem a little more distant. So I'm gonna come right onto my canvas and just start scrubbing that color in. And that is just a little darker than I want, but that's okay, I'm just gonna get the majority of this paint off of my brush and then I can kick that back and lighten it a little bit. So I'm kind of using the flat foot pressure, so the whole pressure of my brush is on the canvas. If you have any spots where the texture of the canvas is showing too much, you can go onto the tippy toe and kind of spiral it. That helps really dig it down into that texture. Now, if you saw my old smoky background video that I did quite a while ago, what we're doing here is very, very similar to that. And if you haven't seen that, you can click the little information i-card up here in the top and that will take you over to it. So I just grabbed some more white and lightened that up a little bit more. I'm kind of taking it until that paint just stops coming off. See how there's very little paint that's what we're looking for. Now I can grab a little more. I'm gonna go just a little bit darker this time. Still more on the blue side of the mixture than the brown side. And I'm gonna start right about where that paint started to fuzz out. And then bring it in. And let's go a little bit darker. So this painting this week was actually inspired by my husband, Vince. We saw a photo of a door somewhere this week and he said, you should paint something like that. And he said it should be in a forest. So that's kind of where this started. I don't think he really intended for me to paint something that looked like a fairy forest, but that's kind of the personality that it took on. So I went with it. I'm not being real precise with my colors here. Sometimes it's a little bluer, sometimes it's a little browner, but overall, I'm looking for this color to get from lighter to darker as we go out. And right here, because I had a lot of paint on my brush, I'm having a hard time getting it to blend in with this area that's fairly dry. So if that happens, just pick up a little more of your white and go over that. All right, I'm gonna 
Keep doing the same thing, just going a little bit darker all the way to the edges. I'm always gonna use white though. I'm never gonna go just solid blue and brown because I don't want it to be that dark. Just darker than what's right here. You don't have to worry about down toward the ground though here. I'm not gonna take it all the way down. I'm just gonna take it about to where I think I want the grass to start. And that's about all I'm gonna do. I think I might take just a little bit of white here and there, just to make sure I've still got some variation in my background. All right, now my background is still wet, but if yours is dry, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna use my 5 8 inch angle brush, but if all you have is a half an inch, that will work too. I'm gonna wet it in my jar and then just wipe it on the edge just once. Well, maybe twice, because we got a little extra drip in there. And I'm gonna start with a color pretty similar to this. It can be a little more on the brown side if you like. Still keep that blue-brown mixture. And we're gonna help make these trees seem distant and faded into the fog by doing a very similar thing with them that we did with the background here. We're gonna have lighter trees here, and they're gonna be a little bit shorter. And as they come this way, they're gonna get a little bit bigger and a little bit darker. So I have a color here that I think is pretty close to that. And I'm just gonna start right about here. I'm not going all the way down to where I stopped this color. And I'm just gonna make some very simple trees. We're really not gonna put a lot of time and attention into these trees. Remember that the tip of your angle brush always drags, so if I'm starting down, my brush is pointing down. If I'm gonna start up here, I flip it around so the point is up here. We're not gonna put a lot of detail in these. A little extra water. Just a few little branches. Maybe we'll make some even shorter ones. And then let's kind of insinuate a ground. So I'm just going back and forth. I'm not trying to blend it in with the background. So that'll show up just a little bit and it'll kind of look like faded out distant background. Let's go a little bit darker again. Little extra drop of water. And this time I will start just a little bit lower, put a little more pressure on my brush and maybe we'll make these trees just a bit bigger. Let them overlap the trees that you just did. Don't try and keep them completely separate. If you end up covering one up completely, that's okay. And let's do the same thing with the ground here. I'm just kind of dusting back and forth. And now we have two different layers of space back here. This is really the only side that I'm gonna put much attention into. Over here, I'll add a few because I don't know what's gonna show behind my large tree 
but really this is all that's going to really show back here. I'm going to add just a few more small ones in this color and we'll move on to a darker color. Let's go darker. And of course, we're going to go a little bit bigger here. Now, if you're not positive what your big tree is going to cover, go ahead and fill in this whole background. And that way you won't end up with a spot that's kind of blank later if your tree doesn't end up covering something. I pretty much know exactly where my tree is going to go, so I'm not going to worry about it. But I'm going to take some of this darker color all the way across because it'll be a nice transition between the grass and this background. All right, now we're gonna do our bright green grass. And this grass being a warm color, a warm green with the yellow, is gonna help make it seem in light and closer to us than this distant background that is more of a muted, cool color. So I'm gonna use my number 12 cloud brush again, and I washed it so it's wet, but I dried it off on a paper towel pretty good. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my blue-brown mixture. I'm doing pretty equal, I think, of the two colors here, both blue and brown. And then I'm gonna come in and grab some of my primary yellow. I'm gonna start right here below this darker color that I laid and just kind of back and forth over it. If it's wet, it might blend into it a little. If it's not, it'll just lay over top of it and neither one really matters. So don't worry about that. It can be wet or dry. I'm gonna go all the way across here. And actually, I want a bit of a hill right here. So I'm gonna bring this up a little. And then we can bring it down. Now, as I start bringing it down, I'm picking up less of the blue and brown and just getting yellow. And see, because I'm using this brush and kind of doing those lazy X's, it's giving us a dynamic ground. It's not just a flat ground. It's got some movement in there, and that's what I like. I think I'm really just gonna pick up yellow for the rest of this. That blue-brown on my brush is strong enough that it won't go away completely before we get to the bottom. I forgot I actually wanted to add a few leaves into these trees here. Not too many, just to say that there's leaves back there. So I'm gonna take my number six round brush, mix up colors very similar to what we did on the trees here, and I'm just gonna lightly dot some on. So we'll start with the lighter ones. I'm just gonna come in here and just lightly kind of speckle some on. Don't keep it confined right to the branches. Make some of it come off a little bit, and I know you can't see this color real well, but once we get to some of the darker ones, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. It doesn't have to be real precise. This is not gonna be the focus of the painting anyway. See, just kind of dotting it on. My brush is pretty dry, so it's, the leaves are kind of breaking. They're not covering the canvas all the way, and I like that because it helps with that distant kind of foggy effect. If they were real crisp, then I think that they would look closer than we want them to look. See how my branch is right here, but I'm kind of taking some of these darker ones out there. 
if you keep them just tightly clustered against the branches, I think that it will look a little bit strange. All right, I'm going back to my 5 8 inch angle brush and we're going to start on our large tree. Now, if you like, you can take a piece of chalk and sketch your tree on. For me though, when I sketch trees, I find that I don't like the way that they look. So I prefer to just go straight to them with paint, but do what you need to do. So I'm going to mix up my blue brown again and I'm going to go heavier on the brown this time. Make our tree a little bit warmer since it's closer to us. So a little heavier on the brown and I'm gonna grab just a bit of my yellow and throw it in there. And just a speck of white. So I've got kind of this muted dark green. Now I don't want my tree to just be straight up and down. So I'm gonna start with kind of a root over here. Kind of give it a little jagged edge and start bringing it up. I'm kind of letting my brush wiggle a little as it goes so that I get some personality into this tree. And I can change any of this as I go. Let's bring the other side down right about here. We'll give it another little root that comes down into the grass. This is just a big old oak tree. And then we can fill it in. I'm gonna do a very similar color. And we're gonna paint over all of this, so if your color's a little inconsistent, it's not a big deal. I think that that'll help add to the personality of the tree anyway. And don't worry if you can see your background through it. Just get it all filled in. I'm just gonna kind of feather it over the top of where that green starts. I don't need to draw a hard line there. I don't need, a, I don't need them to blend. Because we're gonna have grasses and stairs and other elements that kind of cover that transition anyway. So don't, don't sweat that part too much. Let's go ahead actually and take kind of a gnarly branch off that way. Now before we start highlighting our tree, let's put in a placeholder for our door and some windows. So I'm gonna use my half inch angle brush and I wet it in my jar and I'm just gonna get some brown paint. This is just gonna be a placeholder. So decide where you want your door to be and about where the bottom of it's gonna be. So I'm gonna have my stairs start right about here. So I'm just gonna make a line there that is a placeholder for the bottom of my door. I'm gonna come in here and draw a line straight down. Your little fairy door can look however you want it to look. It doesn't have to be a rectangular door. 
It could be a little round hobbit hole or something. It can be whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna bring it up and then kind of curve it on the top. And then just fill it in. And my tree is still wet, so I'm smearing that paint, but again, none of that matters because I'm gonna paint over the door anyway. But I wanna know where my door and windows are gonna be before I start highlighting the tree so that I can highlight around them and make them look like they're part of the tree and not just kind of plopped onto a finished tree. So that's where my door will be. I want a little window right up here. So I'm just gonna draw a circle and if you need to use a different brush to make a circle, go ahead and do that. Use whatever you're comfortable with. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfectly round circle. In fact, as I start adding the highlights to the tree, I may take some little knots and folds over top of a part of the window or the door, which will make it not be perfectly symmetrical or round anymore. Let's add one more window. I'm gonna put my other window right about here. All right, now we're gonna start adding some highlights to our tree. So I'm gonna stick with my half inch angle brush. I still have my brown on it. And I'm gonna bring in some blue. I'm using about half blue, half brown. And I dried my brush off on a paper towel, so this paint mixture I'm doing here is quite dry. And then I'm gonna grab some yellow and mix it in there. Start getting a really warm tone to that green. Let's get a little bit of white, not a whole lot, just enough so we can tell that it's a different color than the rest of the tree. And I'm gonna brush a bit of that off. I don't want globs of paint. And I'm gonna use my brush on the edge for the most part. I might use it flat here and there. And I like this bump here. And because I added this branch afterwards, I can kind of see a line in here. I don't know if you can see that. So I've got my branch that comes up this way, but I can see the original line from the tree. So I'm gonna take that as a cue and say that this highlight starts up here, comes down the edge, and let's go a little bit lighter on that. You can't really see that. So I'm gonna throw in a little more yellow and a little more white. There we go. So I'm gonna start up in here, bring it down the edge, and let it kind of trail off. Then I'm gonna come back with super light pressure and I'm gonna angle my brush just a little bit. So rather than doing it again on the edge like I did with the line, I'm gonna tilt it just a bit with light pressure and go back over that line to just very lightly get rid of it and drag it back just a bit. And you can put a little more pressure on it if you feel like you need to. See how dry my brush is and how little paint I have. All it's really doing is fading back. It's not really depositing a lot more paint. Let's get a little bit more. And we'll add another one. I'm gonna take one from in here and bring it down over the edge of my door just a little bit and down. And now these lines are never gonna cross each other. They might meet back up to form one line, but they're never gonna cross over top of each other. Now from here, decide which one, it doesn't matter which one, is gonna be the protruding part and which part is gonna fade back. So I kind of like this as the protruding part, so I'm gonna dust this back side of it out. This is really a very similar technique to what we do when we highlight rocks. It's just different brush stroke directions and, and angles, but the technique is really the same. And then right here, I think I'll dust this part out. It 
So now we have a deeper spot within our tree and two parts that kind of poke out and wind around. We can even come back with a little one inside of it. Now when deciding which part to fade out and which part to leave poking forward, that's completely up to you. There's not a right and wrong here. This is your twisty tree, so make it whatever you need it to be. If you feel like you put too much of the light color on and lost that darker, deeper color, then just mix up a little bit and add it back in. I'm gonna zoom you out a little bit more there, and we'll do a few more. Again, quite a bit of yellow. We wanna really start getting some of that yellow light into the tree. And let's take another one maybe from here down. Just don't use too much water on your brush here because too much water is gonna make the paint cover everything a lot more. A drier brush is gonna help you dust it all together. See how I turn my brush on the angle a little bit? And you can even come in here and just insinuate a smaller ridge. I think the hardest part about doing this is just knowing where to start. Once you've got your first couple on there, then everything else just kind of pieces together the way it should. So I'm gonna zoom you out a little bit so you can see the whole thing, so you can tell how the shapes are working together. And I'm just doing the exact same thing with the exact same color mixture. Don't get impatient and start too light here. We're gonna go back and add some highlights, especially since we're gonna have some lights in our tree that drape, and then we'll have light coming from the windows and the door. And so we will know better where our highlights are gonna be once we've got all of the crevices in the tree and once we've painted the lights on. Then we can make sure that we've got some nice highlights all over our tree in the places where they would be. And see, I even made a little bump on my tree that wasn't there before, I just took it out. So if you have a spot where you feel like your tree is too flat, just make a little part of this bark that comes out over there, it doesn't matter. My brush is still just very, very dry. I'm not picking up more water. You know, we actually did something very similar to what we're doing here quite a while ago in my Starry Night video, the old, old, old video that I did a while back. It was kind of a simplified version of Van Gogh's Starry Night. 
And so this is really quite similar to the way we did the cypress tree in that video. And again, that video is up in the information i-card at the top right if you haven't seen that one and would like to see kind of a simplified version of this. You could absolutely take that exact same technique and use that here if you're having a, a difficult time with this. I went just a little light there, so I'm going to pick up just a bit more of my blue-brown mixture. and let that help me kind of dust it back into the tree. Now our branch, I'm gonna make it seem like it's kind of coming from the front of the tree here. It's not just jutting straight out of the side. So to do that, I'm gonna take one of these little curls and bring it up here into the branch and then dust it out along the bottom here. If you can hear the music in the background, that is by a couple of brothers named Derek and Brandon. I believe their last name is pronounced Feicher. And they have lots of videos on YouTube of their music and it's really quite awesome music. And I really fell in love with it and asked them and they said that I could use it in the videos. And I listened to it quite a bit while I was developing this painting this week and it was so perfect that I decided I would use it in the video this week too. And there's a link in the video description below where you can find their YouTube channel. They've got some really great music that's, that's really awesome to paint to. Lots of different moods. And I almost forgot to do this little part down here, so we'll just do that real quick, and then we'll start working on a few highlights. All right, let's go ahead and fill in our windows. That brown paint is dry. So I'm still using my half inch angle brush. I'm gonna grab some yellow and some white. I'm not mixing them real well. I've just got them both on there. And I'm gonna fill in this shape. Now, if one of my little swoops in my tree went over the edge, I'm gonna make sure not to paint over that. I wanna keep that so this window won't be a circle anymore. I 
just make sure that you lay the paint on thick enough that it covers the brown underneath. I'm gonna come back and dunk straight into my yellow and put a fairly large blob of the yellow on the one side and then go into my white the same way and we'll put a brighter white spot on the other side and just dust out any paint paintbrush lines. And that's what I'm going to do on the other window as well. See how it looks like that window is kind of tucked back inside of the tree a little bit. Exactly what I wanted. All right, let's do our wood boards on our door. And we're gonna go very simple with this. So I'm using my number six flat brush. It's about a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna grab just a hint of blue, not a ton. I'm mostly gonna do brown. Just that blue is gonna gray it down a little bit, but it'll stay warm. So I'm loading up my brush with that color, and then I'm gonna come into my yellow and just grab a little bit. And I'm gonna come into my white and also grab just a little bit. I'm gonna come from the top edge and just bring my brush straight down. And every time I go back for more paint, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of a different mixture. But I'm gonna do it the same way, the same colors, and all of my brush strokes are either gonna come from the bottom straight up or from the top straight down. Don't go over it and over it and over it, but if you get a spot that is too light or too dark, just grab one of your other colors and streak over it again. So I feel like that is too light right there. So I just picked up a little extra brown and I'm just gonna lightly streak over it. Much better. Now again, I've got a part of the tree that's kind of covering the door. So I'm not gonna take this over top of that. See how I'm starting my brush right on the edge of whatever that shape is. I'm touching my brush to that edge. So my brush is kind of at an angle, but then I'm dragging it straight down. And I got a little hint of the blue in there, and I think that's kind of nice. It kind of helps insinuate a darker spot or a crack in the board. Now I know I wanna have a window in there with some light, so I'm just gonna load up with brown. And I'm gonna do something very similar to what I did with the other windows. I'm just gonna draw a shape with the brown paint. And I think we'll do this one circular too. You can certainly do any shape that you want. While we're on the door, let's add some little details. So I'm gonna get some blue and some brown. Mix them pretty even. That's how we're gonna get a nice dark color, still using my little flat brush. And from the edge here, I'm just gonna insinuate that there's some of those little metal hinges that come across the boards. That's about it. I'm gonna take the end of my brush, grab a little blue, Grab a little brown, just mix them together. Get a little bit of that mixture right on the end. And we'll put a little doorknob over here. We'll come back later and add a little highlight to that doorknob once it's dry. All right, let's start really highlighting right around where our lights are gonna be. So I'm still using my little flat brush and it's a little damp. I might use this brush a little wetter than I did the angle brush in here. So I'm gonna grab some more of that blue-brown mixture, a little heavier on the brown than the blue. 
and I'm going to come over into my yellow. Rather than bring my yellow to it, I'm going to come into my yellow so that I can get quite a bit. Let's get a nice bright color. There we go, and we'll grab a little bit of white and mix that in there. Wipe off a bunch of that. We don't want too much paint on our brush. And then right where we feel like the light would be hitting it the most, we're gonna do a very similar technique to what we did with the angle brush. Just kind of dusting on that brighter color And that's really going to help set this apart from the darker background color. And see how I'm slightly dusting it back. So that color I just added is coming back as far as right here, but it's so thin and so faint that it's not covering everything. It's just giving us that appearance of a glow. So I'm going to go through and do this right around where I think that the lights would be the brightest. And then we'll come back and just amp those up a tiny bit and we're done with our tree. And remember, we are going to have strands of lights hanging too. So think about where you want your strands to be and kind of plan your highlights around that. And if that's too difficult for you, if you just have no idea, then wait and you can add your highlights after the strands of lights. I know that my strands are gonna connect here just below this window and they're gonna drape this way and then probably about like that, kind of around this window. But just like when we highlight rocks, feel free to experiment. If you don't like a highlight, you can paint it over with a, with a darker color. That's not an issue. I'd rather have you experiment and end up with a few highlights that you don't like that you cover than you know, be afraid to experiment and not get the look that you want. Remember that making mistakes is not a bad thing. Making mistakes is what gives us the opportunity to learn something new. You might do a highlight that you don't like, but then you learn how to cover it up. And maybe in the process of covering it up, you learn a different way to make highlights. Maybe you end up liking the process better of kind of glazing a darker color over top of a super light color. Maybe that's how you end up doing highlights, but you never would have discovered that if you hadn't allowed yourself to make a mistake in the first place. So I am almost gonna cover all of my ridges in this lighter color. There's a few like up here that I might leave without it, but for the most part, I'm gonna put this on the majority of these ridges. I don't have my window there yet, but I know that I'm going to have a window, so it would be quite bright here. I 
wet down my brush just a little bit and then wiped it on a paper towel so it's not totally wet, but it was a little drier than I wanted it. All right, now we're just gonna amp up a few of the highlights in some of the brighter areas and we'll be done with our tree. So I'm gonna grab some yellow and bring it over here, mix it with some white. I didn't clean my brush real well, so there's still a tiny bit of that greenish brown mixture in there. I'm gonna wipe a bit of that off and we'll do some bright highlights. I'm not gonna take it out as far as the other color. Every time we get brighter, the highlight covers a little less area. Get a spot that's a little bit too much, just kick it back with a slightly darker color. I am letting these lines be just a little bit harder than some of the other lines. Because I feel like a direct light would just be a little bit stronger and maybe a little bit more stark than kind of the faded out shadows. All right, let's draw our strand for our lights. Now I'm gonna use my half inch angle brush, but that's because I'm the most comfortable drawing straight lines or very crisp lines with my angle brush. But if you prefer a liner brush or even a flat brush, that's okay. So I'm gonna come into my blue brown, about an equal amount of each to get a nice dark color. And I'm gonna decide where it's gonna connect and I want it to connect right here under this light. So I'm going to start there and drag it down and back up. And maybe we'll have another one that connects in a slightly different place. And it's going to hang just a little bit different. And then we'll connect them. So we'll take this one over this way. I'm gonna take the end of my angle brush and just go straight down into my white. And we're gonna make some very simple lights. All I'm gonna do is just touch about a quarter of an inch or so below the wire that I just made.
and on the bottom wire as well. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add some little crossbars to our windows. So my blue-brown mixture, and I'm gonna start here and just do something. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I like to curve them a little bit because it kind of makes the window look domed, almost like it's a bubble. But you can do them straight up and down if you like. I'm gonna make them kind of angled differently. Now our brown paint is dry here, so let's go ahead and put our light in our window on the door. Just a yellow-white mixture and then a blob of yellow down one side, pretty heavy. I'm applying that paint quite heavy and a little blob of white on the other side. It's gonna help give us a nice warm glow look. All right, now while all of our lights dry, we're gonna go ahead and add in our stairs. These stairs are gonna be quite simple. And I'm just gonna use my half inch angle brush and then grab a tiny speck of my blue, mix it with my brown so it's more on the brown side, but very little, I picked up very little of that paint. I'm gonna come mix it into my white a bit and maybe throw a speck of yellow in there. I'm gonna start with the top step right at the base of the door. Just kind of draw a line. And I'm gonna do that again under it and just kind of streak it out to the right. Just about like that. I'm gonna make it just a little heavier, the, the paint. And let's do that again. We're gonna come down a bit, and I want my stairs to be moving this way, so the next stair is gonna be over just a little bit to the right, but what I'm also gonna do is make it just ever so slightly wider, and that's gonna make it look like the stairs are coming closer to us as they get wider toward the bottom. So I'm gonna start here, streak it over, keep them pretty much horizontal. Don't worry about what the edges look like because we are gonna cover all of that up. You're not going to see those edges. I'm keeping a little extra water in my brush though because I want to be able to cover the texture of the canvas. And again, we're going to start into the right just a little bit more and drag it over a little bit farther. So notice they're slowly getting wider as we move across. And we'll just give an insinuation of one down here. Whoops, that got away from me, but that's all right. So these are gonna be the tops of our stairs. Now we're gonna make the back part of the stairs. So I cleaned off my brush, I'm just gonna get the blue-brown. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start from the edge here and drag it over. Now on the stair above it, I'm not trying to blend those colors in, I'm letting them be separate. But as I get to the stair below it, I am taking it over top of that white color just a little bit. And my white color is kind of dry. If yours is still white, you'll get a little bit of a blend. There we go. You don't need them to be blended perfectly. You just want to kind of break that transition. So I grabbed a little bit more of my white mixture. Perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Let's do that again on the next stair. Blue brown, start just under it. Keep them pretty separate. Don't try and blend them. Fill that in. And over top of this stair just a little bit. And if it doesn't blend because it's dry like that, 
I just picked up the tiniest, tiniest hint of that white color, dust it over that transition, and there we go, perfect. And these are not gonna look like stairs until we add the grass. So if you're doing this and you're really hating your stairs, just keep going. Don't give up on it just yet. And again, just get a little more water whenever you need it. I try and let you guys know when I'm getting more water, but sometimes I forget. And it's hard to make sure that my water jars are always visible. I'm going back to my quarter inch flat brush and we're gonna do some very simple highlights on here. So I'm gonna grab a speck of yellow, mix it with some white and pretty much right along the edge. I'm just gonna dust this color on just wherever you feel like it needs it. You can even go in and grab just a little speck of pure white. And let's do that all across this edge of all of these stairs. I'm almost not even touching my canvas. Remember when I said, pretend like you're maybe dusting something that's very, very delicate, and if you put too much pressure on it, trying to get the dust off of it, you're gonna knock it over and break it. That's exactly the pressure I want you to use here with this paint. Just barely touching the paint to the canvas. And that hard line between here and here is gonna help your eye determine that these are different planes. This one is catching all of the light. This one is catching none of the light. But here where we've got the shadow behind, that's because this part is blocking some of the light from here so that we have a little bit of a shadow on the back of the flat part of the stair. All right, now we're gonna add some grass. Now lately I've been using the fan brush a lot and I was gonna use the fan brush today, but I decided to use this old stiff bristle brush. And that's because I like to do things a little different each time. Sometimes one technique or one brush doesn't work for everybody. So I like to show you different ways that you can do things. So we're gonna make grass with this. But if you have a fan brush and you're comfortable with that, feel free to use that here. So I'm gonna take this brush, just dip it straight into my brown, tap a bit of it off straight into my blue, tap it off, and kind of twirl it like that to mix the colors together. But I'm not trying to get the paint all up here. I just want it on the ends of the brush. Get some yellow, kind of swirl it in so we've got a green color. Tiny hint of white, not much white. And just tap it into there. So I've got a little bit of a variegated color. My brush has some darker spots, some white spots, some green spots. Now let's start up here on this little hill. I'm just using the end of my brush and just flicking up. You always wanna start at the back. If you start down here and work up, you're gonna cover up the ends of your grasses with the bottom of the grasses and it's gonna look flat and weird. So always start in the back and come forward. Let's get a little more of that dark in there. I'm not gonna cover up my tree root just yet. I always pick up just a little bit different of a color combination. Now I can kind of go over my tree root because these grasses are in front. And as I come closer to the door, I'm gonna get a little bit lighter because we've got some light here and we're gonna have some fireflies. 
So I'm gonna take this on this side right up to the stairs. I'm gonna cover up a little bit of the dark color here to say that it ends. See how I'm kind of cutting around the edge of the stairs a little on this side? Once I've done this side and the other side with the grasses along the stairs, these are gonna look more like 3D stairs and not just some weird stripes. So I'm gonna keep adding this and I'm gonna get lighter and lighter as I move down, just like the underpainting is, how the underpainting goes from dark to light. Using very light pressure, just kind of scratching onto the canvas. And sometimes my grasses move in different directions. And I'm not necessarily trying to cover all of the background color because it's okay if that pokes through. That's why we made it green, so that we didn't have to worry about that. I'm just gonna work on some of the highlights in here a little bit. All right, let's do the other side. So this other side, I don't feel like it would be quite as dark as what we have back here. Most of this I feel like would be fairly highlighted. So I'm gonna go about with a color like that, but it doesn't have to be real exact. So over here, I'm gonna make sure that the grasses overlap my stairs all the way down. So since we have this kind of a shape on this side and a smoother shape on this side, that's gonna be the piece that helps make these look like stairs. Let's go just a little bit darker. Bring it up over the base of the tree. Let's throw a little more blue in there. There we go. This is very similar to how we did the grasses in the Harvest Garden video back last fall. Same brush, same technique. And we are really done with all of the super detailed difficult stuff. This is going to be the fun part from here on out, just the finishing touches. You can make your grasses a little longer down here at the bottom where it's a bit closer to us. We're gonna add one last color, a little bit of quinacridone. You can use any color you like, or you can skip this part if you like. We're just gonna do a few small flowers growing in the grass here. So my half inch flat brush, I wet it in my jar and just kind of shook off the extra drip. So it's got a bit of water in it. I'm gonna pull out some of this quinacridone and load it up in there. Maybe a little speck of white, just so it's not so transparent. Got just another little bit of water to mix in there, and I'm gonna scoop it up on the end of my brush. Take another brush, and then right down here, mostly at the bottom, and we'll let a little bit go up. I'm gonna hold it pretty close, closer than I do when I'm doing stars, because I want it to kind of give me these little pockets of color, rather than spraying everywhere. Don't splatter directly on your stairs. And then a little more water, a little more white. I'm gonna make up a color that's quite a bit lighter. And we'll just add a few of these. And that's all we're gonna do for flowers. All 
All right, now the white here is dry. You wanna make sure that this part's dry before we do the next step. And I'm gonna to go to my number four cloud brush or whatever brush you use for scrubbing. And I'm gonna come into my yellow and grab just a pinpoint. Not a lot of yellow, kind of tap it off. I'm gonna come over to one of my lights, come right onto the light, and I'm gonna twirl like that. Just gonna twirl around it. It's just gonna give it a very slight glow. I'm gonna do that on all of my lights here. Don't use too much paint. I mean, unless you really want some, some big, huge glows, which is fine if you do. But if you just want a nice, subtle glow, then just use a tiny bit. I'm gonna do that across all of these lights, even the ones that are right in front of the tree. Don't use white in here. If you use white in here, you're gonna end up covering everything. If you wanted these to be a different color of light, maybe some pink or green or whatever, that would be totally cool. You can do that. Just use a different color instead of yellow. But still very little paint. Remember, you can always add more, but once you get too much, it's done. I'm gonna take the corner of my flat brush. You can use a round brush if you like. I'm just trying to reduce the number of brushes that I use in today's video. I'm gonna dip into some white and I'm just gonna come back in and just add a little point of white, kind of like what we did in the window, how it was yellow with a white spot. I'm just gonna kind of do that on each of these lights. I'm not covering all of the yellow, just a little white spot here and there. Let's finish up our door. Just give it some little crossbars in the window. And we'll do a tiny, tiny highlight of some yellow and white on the doorknob. All right, last part and we're done. So I have my canvas laying as flat as I can get it in here. And I'm gonna take my one inch flat brush and I wet it in the jar and just barely shook off some of the water. I'm gonna grab some white and some yellow and mix them together so I get a nice, bright, but opaque color. Mix a little extra water in there. Now I don't want this paint to flow. I still want it to be fairly thick, but enough that it will splatter. So we'll try that. Scoop up a little bit into the end of my brush. And we're gonna do this different than stars because I don't want them to be everywhere and I wanna be able to control the size and exactly where they're placed. So that's why I'm laying this flat. And I'm just gonna hold my finger out and I'm just gonna lightly tap on my finger. Now I'm gonna make some fireflies, but I'm not gonna put them over top of the stairs. Some of them may scatter there and that's fine, but I'm gonna concentrate them onto the grass. So let's see how that does. Uh, we're getting a little bit, 
but not enough, so I'm gonna mix just a little more water in there and scoop it up into my brush. There we go. So I'll get some bigger ones and some smaller ones. And I'm trying to keep my larger ones toward the bottom here. Now I'm really only concentrating on putting them into the grass, but as you can tell, some of them get away and I do get a few up here and that's perfectly fine. Another thing this does laying it flat like this is it makes sure to prevent any of those streaks. And I'll only get nice round little spots. I just wanna get a few more large ones right down here and then I think we're gonna call it done. And then I'll sign it. And there's your fairy tree. I hope that you had as much fun painting this as I did. For me, this is one of those paintings that I could do over and over and over again. It was very, very enjoyable to do. If you try this painting, I would love to see what you do with it. Make sure to check out the video description below for links to where you can find me all over the internet, including Instagram and Facebook. Make sure you follow me there so you can share your painting with me. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with a friend who you think would like it as well. If you haven't yet already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can paint with me every week. Thank you again for painting with me, everyone, and I'll see you next time.